Top of the day to you boys and girls. We're at the bench in the shop today for your viewing pleasure. We're going to discuss some of the similarities and some of the contrast between a 372 XP with the X torque designation, which is the stratification style um, cylinder and piston assembly, which is the new uh, cleaner burning um, saw versus a 375 XP which is technically a 372 XPW side note I will mention this is maybe my most favorite um, badge that is on any saw on the full starter cover that I know of it's just pretty sweet not too many of them they were they were not too many they were pretty scarce and it's a pretty cool concept um, overall these saws are relatively close to the same outwardly if they're fully assembled there's not too much difference uh, there's a little bit taller um, chain brake handle to accommodate a little bit taller handlebars on the X torque saw because the cylinder is about 10 millimeters taller than a standard XP or the XPW if we take a look at these handlebars real quick we see that it's um, well, you maybe you can't see. They're a little bit bigger in diameter, a um, little bit different design of the vinyl, and they're a little bit taller as well to accommodate the taller piston and cylinder assembly, and to have some clearance because the cylinder cover is also taller. Um, that's about the only outward stuff. If you look at the cylinder covers themselves, um, X Torx on the top, standard 372 on the bottom. Uh, again, it's about a half inch or so taller. Um, the only difference, other than the height, because the bolt pattern is the same, is the hole that allows you to access the decompression relief valve. Um, it comes up through the top in the X Torx saws, in the 372 and XPW, it comes out the side. Um, maybe a little bit of a plug for the owner there just because if we look at the pool starter covers they're exactly identical except for the badge and also the handles you can see there's a little bit of a difference this one's much wider it's much smoother it actually feels better than the early version they bolt right on either set of cases um, because the cases are exactly the same in the 362 365 370 Two, 372 XPX Torque, 375, 372 XPW, all the same cases, 36 millimeter stroke, metal flywheel, same air guide, same air injection process, everything's pretty much the same. The tanks are the same. They did um, actually decrease the volume in the um, 372 crankcase in about 2003. Three, I think somewhere in there they actually recast the cases and they actually decreased the volume a little bit in in the case um, from like the really early 372s and the 371s and they did upgrade the worm gear in the oiler um, I don't remember when they did that exactly I can't tell you when I first saw that it was quite a while ago though so there's some minor tweaks that they did but for the most part everything's interchangeable the parts all interchange bolt right on base gaskets the same um, if we start looking at this air cleaner cover the only difference between the X torque and the 372 XPW is there's no little vinyl XPW insignia on top of the air cleaner cover um, other than that they're exactly the same underneath is a cartridge style flocked this is works very well in extremely dusty conditions partially because it's flocked and partially because we have um, a, an air injection system which separates the fine dust from the heavy chunks and you get a little bit of dust in but you, it's pretty the air is relatively clean because it's coming off the flywheel um, these do separate as a side note uh, I've had them separate and have problems and you can just uh, use some epoxy and tighten it up on the air horn and let it set till it cures and you're good to go again but I've never even seen one that leaks even if they do happen to separate which on occasion they do um, if you look at the air horns you can see that it doesn't matter which one you have they fit right on same same kind of system 
If we look at the air horns themselves, that's what Husky calls these. This would be the X-Torque air horn. This would be the 372 XP and the XPW. Um, you can see the difference, wide open, no encumbrances whatsoever, nice and open, big hole, a lot of flow going. The only problem that would slow the process down is the fact that it has to make a 90. That would be the fresh air coming in. Um, it's not quite as efficient of a, a design as a straight shot would be, like for instance, say on the stills, but that's what you get in these saws. Um, as a side note, your back pressure is going to hit in here and have a little bit uh, it's going to be contained a little bit more since it also has to make that corner to get back up into your air cleaner. Um, if we look at the air horn on the X torque saw, we see that it's separated. Um, it's effectively split, uh, not quite in half, but close. Um, the fresh air is coming in on the top. That's for the stratification process. The fresh air that's getting mixed with the fuel, which I call the charge, is coming in on the bottom. If we look at the front of it, we see that this isn't really a super awesome design for getting a lot of airflow. We will notice that the butterfly sits right on top of this. Um, when the choke is in the open position, in other words, when you're running the saw, and that's to keep the fresh air uh, is separated as much as possible from the air that's going in uh, to uh, mix with the fuel and become the, the what I call the charge. If we look at the carburetors, um, they're both Walbro. They're just a little bit different. We definitely have needles that are adjustable uh, a little bit with the stops. We might have to do an unstopping process on that. Um, but if you look inside there, you can see there's a plastic wedge that uh, basically divides the Venturi in half. The butterflies rest on the, there's some little reliefs that are um, in there. At, so this would be wide open throttle. The butterfly hits on the little plastic piece that's separating. There's little um, reliefs that accommodate the shape of the butterfly in there. So they're trying to seal the fresh air going in on the top from what the air that's going in on the bottom, which is, creates the, the charge, essentially. But we will notice that it's uh, a relatively interesting concept. This is uh, a lot of stratified charged engines use this particular system where they're split in the air like that, but it's not conducive to good flow. I will mention that it's a 21 millimeter Venturi size, but we're only getting half the flow going in with the charge. If we look at the XPW carburetor, wide open, pretty good transition. This is a 17 millimeter class. Um, Venturi size, it's a little bit smaller than that, maybe 16.8 or something, or 9, but essentially 17 mil. Um, adjustable needles, these are fully adjustable. This is a really early 6B carburetor, um, so it's pretty sweet. If we look at the intake manifolds, we'll notice that they're quite a bit different in design. The XPW is wide open, smooth as silk, has a little metal ring, keeps the um, it keeps it from collapsing on itself, I guess, as uh, what my interpretation of why that ring is in there. So your manifold's a little bit flexible. I'm thinking that as the suction happens when the piston's going up, they want to keep it from deforming. That would be my guess as to why it's there. We look at the other side, big or nice open hole. Circles flow a lot of air really well. And the transition when it mates up with the cylinder is good. If we look at the XPW, or excuse me, the X-Torque manifold, we see that this has got a lot of encumbrances going on. Um, the fresh air is coming in the top. It's wide open, which for the life of me, I don't know why they didn't put the, um, there's a little stabilizer piece in the bottom that keeps this from um, deforming again. I don't know why that isn't on the top on the fresh air circuit. It's actually more of a, flow situation or flow reduction situation going on where the charge is trying to get through in the bottom. You can see where it mates up to the cylinder. The transitions are usually pretty good with these as well, but the fresh air um, circuit has as much volume, if not more, than the charge circuit on the bottom, and it's not a round shape. It's kind of a semi, semi pretty semi-square actually, mostly square. Um, not super awesome for getting a good amount of flow going through there. So if we segue off for a second, we'll just look at the cases real quick, and we notice that they're the motorcycle style. I did mention that 
we have a 36 millimeter stroke, at least I hope I did, but we have big reliefs right underneath where the transfer ports sit. Um, motorcycle design, this saw benefits well if you were to put a um, full circle crank in there in concept because you're changing your pumping ratio quite a little bit. Um, but like I said, virtually the cranks are the same, interchangeable that way. <clears throat> Excuse me. If we look at the pistons and talk about them for a second, um, you'll notice there's quite a bit of height differential. It's about seven and a half millimeters with the X torque. They're both sporting two rings, so there's a little more parasitic drag than a single ring um, version. We have to make a note about what the piston's actually doing. There's a, several functions that it performs. First and foremost, it's going to transfer the energy from the combustion process to the rod. Um, it's going to also act as a heat sink, and it also controls the timing, opening and closing of all the ports. So it's multifunction what the piston's doing. But we will note that the X torque piston is much taller and it's much heavier, and there's more drag with the associated extra weight and height. So using a good mix oil is important. And we'll talk a little bit more about what's going on with the stratified charge situation. We'll talk about the tolerance real quick. This one came in at 3.1. This one came in at 1.9, pretty tight. Two is usually generally pretty good in a new um, cylinder, at least the old style stuff. The air injection saws or stratified charge engines are coming in with a lot higher tolerances. It's nothing to see them come in at three now. I've seen some come in at uh, over three by a, a few ten thousandths. Um, just a side note, um, one of the things we'll notice too is the wrist pin is a lot taller in the XPW, which would be on the right. I'm thinking that you can see that from there. Um, so we tried to, we had to have a like much more narrow um, wrist pin because we have the reliefs coming in the back and we have the associated dead port that's pretty common in the stratified charged engines. We'll get into what's happening with those in a minute. We'll take a look at the cylinder. If we look at the X torque saw, mirror image of the other side of the intake manifold, fresh air is coming in, it gets split, runs into two different ports that correspond with the reliefs in the back of the piston. Um, one thing we got to talk about real quick on this piston, I haven't seen any ghosting in any of these. Um, I did take my bore gauge and check this cylinder. It's only off two ten thousandths anywhere from zero, which I use the thrust surface at the bottom, corresponding to the bottom of the piston, um, to measure like the actual tolerance. Uh, two ten thousandths is pretty negligible. Bore is really awesomely straight um, and that kind of helps with that process but we are getting a lot of thrust on a pretty narrow patch in the back. I'm also going to make a note that when the fresh air comes in we're it's entering into the back of the piston relief right here. There's raw unoiled air coming in. My assertion is we have a lot of wear in these saws because um, we're kind of diluting to a degree some of the oil with just raw air. That's why it's important to use really good mix oil. But if we take a look inside, we see that the intake port is square, perfectly square, or it's maybe a little bit rectangular, but it's pretty small. Square is not good for flow. If we look at some of the, that's one of the fresh air inlets right there. Down below the intake port, we see it's pretty decent sized actually um, for a, the size of the saw that it is. It's actually pretty decent. If we look at the exhaust port, we notice it's oval shaped, but it's pretty small. We're not letting a lot of exhaust flow out real quick. Um, combustion chamber is pretty good size. These saws come in around 150 pa pounds of um, uh, compression on a regular basis. Um, the X torque. XPW, XP 372s, they all come in around 150 PSI, and that's because uh, Huskies usually have a pretty good sized um, combustion chamber, especially uh, in the 3 Series saws. They started doing that, uh, they transitioned from the 181 and 85. Uh, that's last year that was made. They had a really small combustion chamber, they started making a 281 in 84 maybe, I don't remember exactly, but it had a little bit bigger combustion chamber when they did the 288, bumped it up two millimeter on the bore, but they really increased the size of the combustion chamber. That's just an interesting side note. 
If we look in the XPW cylinder, we see it's got a pretty good size oval port, um, less restriction on the air coming in. We look at the transfer ports, they're actually pretty good size. If we compare the start of the transfer ports between these two saws, you can see it's quite a bit different in the XPW on the bottom. Allows for a little bit more airflow, has a much bigger and wider exhaust port where you start the inlet part of it, and we're going to get more um, exhaust flow in a quicker fashion going through there. As an interesting side note, if we take a look at an XPW versus a standard 372 XP, this has a 50. 1.4 millimeter bore. This comes in at 50. Uh, the X torque comes in at 50 as well. But if we look at the transfer ports, the front loop is completely wide open where it's uh, has there's material in that it's cast in there when they made this cylinder. These actually came off the 375. They were only turning about 8,500 RPMs. They were used on um, cut off saws and they didn't want the wheels exploding. They had a green ignition, um, 8,500 RPMs was max. I first found out about that cylinder in about 04 and was putting them on the bottom ends of regular 372s. A couple other guys found out about my research, started following suit. We had like XPWs a couple years before they were available in the stores because XPW came out in 2006, if memory serves me correctly. Now, we'll segue off just for a second, talk about what's actually happening in the 372 X torque. We're, we're actually trying to get raw, fresh air into the transfer ports, and it does two things. It's kind of blending a little bit with the initial part of the charge and leaning it out somewhat, and it's actually creating a little bit of a gas barrier, or excuse me, a fresh air barrier, um, so that it takes a little bit longer for the charge to actually get in because it's not actually right up against the edge of the cylinder wall inside. The charge is actually pushed back a little bit with the fresh air, and so that's how they keep um, the charge from escaping basically and having a hydrocarbon issue out of the um, muffler into the atmosphere. Here we have a used 372 X torque. You can see they get a lot of associated wear back here. Um, this is pretty ugly. We won't talk about what's going on with this one right now, but you want to use a good mix oil. It's obvious for that reason, um, but there's a lot of weight and causing a thrust and a wear issue on those saws. Yes, an interesting side note as well, they cast these cylinders um, without the loops as a one unit situation. They actually have caps that fit over the top of the transfer ports. Um, it's a cheaper way to produce a cylinder. Um, I prefer the old style though, personally. And they also, the X Torque saws, because of what's happening with the fresh air and the dead port, you're not getting um, a real quick revving saw. It, it revs up really linearly, like in a line almost, whereas the XP and XPW saws have a tendency to get going and take off real quick. Um, that's kind of one of the problems. You have a lot of airflow issues with the X Torque. I would say that if a guy can get those to run pretty good, that's saying something for that guy. If we look at the mufflers for a second, we'll notice that I don't know if you can see that in there, the whole the the port basically, and the muffler is about the size of a penny, a little bit bigger than a dime, but not as big as a nickel. A pretty small hole for as much displacement as we're talking about. We have an even worse version. This is the jungle. This is an OEM muffler right here, jungle version. Um, it's kind of open in there, but you can see the exhaust has to get inside there and it gets necked down in this little tube. These are used in a really wet environment. There's no screens associated for fire protection. And we have one of my creations here. Uh, dual ported, completely open, no fire screens whatsoever, winter only, race application, super loud, but it flows really well. Um, so we've kind of discussed a lot of things. There's definitely some similarities. If we look at the clutch covers, we see that um, I actually took the liberty to fit what I call the big kid clutch cover, which actually came from a 385 or a 390. Um, the 372s have this 
the, all the 372s, 362s come with this style right here. You can upgrade it for what I call the big kid clutch cover. Um, you can see that the dust flap is quite a bit different. Um, it's a lot more beefy. It's definitely a better uh, use in uh, West Coast application since you're running long bar and you're throwing your chain a lot. It also has a much bigger guide to help keep your chain on the bar and keep you from throwing it and adulterating your dust flap. But you can see it's just a little bit beefier of a clutch cover. The original 385s came out with this. Then they kind of upgraded to this. As an interesting side note, I was able to do some prototype testing on a 385 back in 2001 or 2 or 2000 maybe. Um, it actually came with this exact same clutch cover style with these particular dogs. You can see they're a little different. They started fitting the 372 um, X torque saws with a half wrap handlebar and these little mini dogs out of the box. You have to um, upgrade if you want the full wrap handlebars. I'm not sure why they did that. Um, haven't really heard for sure, probably never will know. This was standard fitment on the uh, 372s. The 371s actually came with a little bit bigger dog and they found out they were breaking. They redesigned it into this. Um, the 372 XPWs also come with this particular dog and the 385 and the 390 which uh, in my opinion that's a little bit small for that saw. But anyway we kind of covered a lot of ground. I hope it was interesting and you found it informative. Thank you for watching this session and please have a blessed day wherever you might be on God's green earth.